Hey guys, Dr. Sangeeta back for another lecture of Dental Patshala and today's video is the last part of the gingiva and today's video we are going to cover the gingival fibers, the principal fiber as well as the secondary fibers and also we will cover the blood supply, lymph nodes and the functions of gingiva. So without further delay, let's jump into it. <laughs> If you enjoy watching our video, then subscribe to our channel. That way you get a notification as soon as I release a video lecture. Now talking about the today's part, which is the gingival fiber. And previous parts, we have already covered the cells of the gingival epithelium, the gingival epithelium, all the layers of the gingival epithelium, which we have covered in a story form. So talking about the today's part, which is the gingival part. Now gingival fibers are the connective tissues of the marginal gingiva which are densely collagenous parts. Now these are basically the collagen fibers. These gingival fibers are the bundles of the collagen fiber which are known as the gingival fibers because they are present in the gingiva. So gingival fibers are basically the collagen fiber and the previous video while doing the connective tissue we have already covered the most of the fibrous part is the collagenous part. Now they contains basically the type 1 collagen and we have already covered the types of collagen in the previous video now these gingival fibers actually they tightly form the tooth so these gingival fibers are attaching the tooth and maintaining the tooth in the place and they are providing the rigidity and they are withstanding all the masticatory forces which are coming onto the teeth so they they are actually protecting the tooth they are not letting the tooth move also and they are uniting the free gingival margin to the cementum of the root and with the adjacent gingival tissues. So coming to the fibers of the gingival tissues, we have two kinds of fiber, the principal fibers and the secondary fiber. Now these principal fibers are the main fibers of the gingival tissue and Arnen and Hargerman in 1953 described these principal groups into five kind of bundles of fibers. So these are the principal fiber of the gingival fiber which are the dentogingival fiber, the alveologingival fiber, the dentoperiosteal fiber, the circular fiber fiber and the transeptal fiber. Now coming to the dentogingival fiber as you can see in the black now these are the dentogingival fibers which are embedded into the cementum of the root and they are projecting from the cementum in a fan like pattern and they are going into the free gingival margin. Can you see they are coming from the cementum and going into the free gingival margin. Now you need to if you want, you want to learn all these principal fibers the first thing you need to do is break the term as I have been always and all always telling you to break the term. Dento means from the teeth and going into the gingiva. So these are the gingival fibers which are coming from the teeth. Can you see there are only two types of fibers which are coming from the teeth. One is the dento gingival fiber and another one is the fibers in the red. The dento periosteal fiber. Now these you need to break the term. Dento periosteal fibers are the fibers which are coming from the teeth and going into the periosteum of the bone. And dento gingival fibers are coming from the teeth and going inside the gingiva. So dento gingival fiber are coming from the cementum and in a fan like pattern they are going and merging into the marge and into the free gingiva of the face of the lingual and in the in also in the interproximal region. Talking about the alveolo gingival fiber now as the name suggests these are the fibers which are coming from alveolar crest. Can you see these green color fibers? They are coming from the alveolar crest. And they are going into the gingiva. Now they are coming from the alveolar crust and they are inserting coronally into the lamina propria. And they are basically attaching the gingiva to the alveolar bone. So because they are coming from the bone and they are going into the gingiva. So they are holding the gingiva. They are attaching the gingiva to, to the bone. Coming to the third fiber we have is the dentoperiosteal fiber which are the red color fiber. Now these fibers run apically into the vestibular. Now break the term as I have been telling you from the dental to the periosteal. So basically these are the fibers which are going into the bone coming from the tooth and going into the bone and they are protecting the PDL. So these fibers are the anchor fibers. These are the anchor fibers which, which are attaching the tooth to the periosteum of the bone. So they run apically into the vestibule and the lingual bone crust and terminating into the 
the uh, tissues of the attached gingiva coming to the fourth fiber again in the black color fibers these are the circular fiber now these fibers are actually uh, co they run in between they encircle the tooth so these are the circular fiber as the name suggests they are encircling the tooth so they we cannot show in the side cross section so these these are the fibers which are running cross in the gingival free gingival margin and they are encircling the tooth in a ring like pattern so these fiber maintain the position of the free gingival margin and holding it against the tooth so basically they are present in the free gingival margin and they are they are holding onto the tooth so these are they are encircling the tooth so these are circular fiber that means they are circling the tooth so if this is the tooth then the just circular fibers are like this so if this is the tooth then circular fibers are like this so like this encircling the tooth so coming to the next fibers and the last principal fibers are a transeptal fiber now as you can see these blue color fibers are the transeptal fibers because we cannot see these blue color fiber in this cross section these transeptal fiber they are running across the interceptum one uh, the adjacent tooth so basically if we can we want to draw these transeptal fibers so they are going from one tooth to they are going to another tooth so these are the transeptal fibers which are either because they, as the name suggests septum means interceptal bone so they can also if in between bone is also coming they are crossing bone also so these fiber run across the interdental septum are embedded in the cementum of the adjacent tooth so from one tooth they are going interproximally and they are going to the another tooth and they are maintaining the tooth to tooth contact so they are maintaining the two tooth contacts now talking about the secondary fibers which was given by the page et al in 1972 now they describe the presence of secondary fibers group which are the minor fibers so page et al told that there are also some minor fibers which are inside the gingival fibers and these are six sets of fibers now the uh, secondary fibers are the periosteal gingival fiber now the periosteal gingival fiber as you can see these are the periosteal gingival fiber as the name suggests they are coming from the periosteum of the bone and going into the gingiva so they are coming from the periosteum of the bone and they are extending into the attached gingiva and these fibers attached to gingiva to the bone so these are the periosteal gingival fibers coming to the next secondary fibers as are interpapillary fibers now can you see these uh, lines in the green so these are our interpapillary fibers so they are present in the papilla in the interdental papilla so these fiber extend the facio lingual direction from suppose this is the buccal view this is the lingual view so they are going in in the buccal bucco lingual or facio lingual direction and they are present in the interpapillary region they are present in the intergingival region and they are supporting the gingival papilla that is why they are known as interpapillary fibers because they are supporting the gingival papilla now coming to the third fiber is a transgingival fibers the fibers in the black now these transgingival fibers can you see they are making s shape so these transgingival fiber or they are making eight a shape of like this eight like this these are the transgingival fiber and these are our tooth these are our tooth and these are the transgingival fiber now these transgingival fiber are arranged between and around the tooth and they are within this attached gingiva and these fibers maintain the alignment of the tooth in arch because they are maintaining the tooth in the position now coming to the intercircular fibers which are the fibers in the red part now intercircular fiber these are in a circular manner and these they these fiber arising from the cementum on the distal surface of one tooth and they are extending into the they are going in uh, either on the buccal both on the buccal side and the lingual side so coming from the distal surface of the one tooth and embedding into the mesial surface of the another tooth not adjacent tooth the next to the adjacent tooth so they are not coming into the adjacent tooth they are coming next to the adjacent tooth so they are intercircular fibers because they are in a circle like manner so these are intercircular fiber so these are coming from distal surface suppose this is a mesial surface this is the distal surface right distal surface of the one tooth and one tooth they are leaving and in the next tooth mesial surface they are embedding into the these surfaces now coming to the intergingival fibers now these intergingival fibers can you see these fibers so 
these are blue color one are the intergingival fiber now these fibers are the intergingival fiber these fiber are arranged within the attached gingiva and in the meso distal direction just beneath the basement membrane so this is our basement membrane can you see with the red apex up now i have made red apex that means they are in the attached gingiva so they are in the beneath just beneath the basement membrane in the attached gingiva and they support and contour uh, they support the tooth and contour the to the adjacent to the attached gingiva coming to the semi circular last secondary fibers which are our semi circular fiber now these are the semi circular because they are not exactly in the circle but they are half of the circle so in a one tooth this is our tooth suppose so this is the tooth these are the semi circular fiber so these are the semi circular fiber these fibers are extending from the mesial surface of the one tooth and they are embedded into the distal surface of the same tooth so these are making a half circle that is why they are known as semi circular fiber and they support the free gingival margin of the gingiva so these are these this is about the principal fiber and the secondary fiber you don't have to uh, rotify this you just need to look at the name and then you can write on your own so the dento gingival fiber from the tooth to the gingival margin and from the tooth they are coming up towards the sulcular epithelium in a fan like man manner so they are going into the free gingiva alveolar gingival fiber from the alveolar bone from the uh, up to the gingiva dento periosteal from the tooth dento means tooth and into the periosteum circular fibers these are encircling the tooth in a circle like manner transseptal is between the interseptal so one tooth to another tooth and we have also have the secondary fiber periosteal gingival fiber from the periosteum of the bone up to the gingiva up to the attached gingiva interpapillary fibers we have inside the papilla so these are the interpapillary transgingival fibers are the fiber which are ends which are actually encircling the whole tooth all of the tooth though so they are maintaining the arch intercircular fibers are the fibers which are actually these are the inter red one are the intercircular fibers so these are intercircular from distal surface and they are leaving one tooth and going into the mesial surface of the next adjacent next to the adjacent tooth and intergingival fibers are present below the basement membrane in the attached gingiva so these are intergingival fibers so these are present actually below the basement membrane in the connective tissue now if you remember in the connective in the basement membrane we have studied that from the base membrane type 7 collagen fiber are the anchor in fiber they are coming they are coming from the basement membrane going into the connective tissue and going back into the epithelium again if you remember in the second part of the video which we have covered during the epithelium we have covered so these are the these anchoring or type 7 fibers collagen fibers these are the intergingival fibers now semi circular fibers are encircling the tooth in half a circle of each tooth so coming to the blood supply of the gingiva and there are supra periosteal arterioles which are coming from the uh, from the alveolar bone and along with the facial and the lingual surfaces also we have vessels of periodontal ligament which are extending into the gingiva and anastomosing into the sulcus area also we have arterioles which are emerging from the crest of the alveolar bone and they are going into the interdental septum and they are giving the supply the blood supply we also have lymphatic drainage in the gingival fibers now these lymphatic drainage are removing the excess of the fluid excess of the protein and excess of microorganism or everything is expelling out and these lymphatic drainage of gingiva brings in the lymphatics of the connective tissue papilla now we also have nerve supply in the gingiva nerve supply basically the nerves which are arising from the pdl the nerves arising from labial buccal and palatal nerves and there are two kind of receptors one is the misner's receptor in the gingiva now these receptors these misner type are for the tactile or for the touch corpuscles and there are also crosses type now these crosses type end bulb are for the temperature receptors so these are the nerve receptors and we will also study the clinical and microscopic features of the gingiva which is a frequently asked question for the practical and in the viva they usually ask the color of the normal gingiva and all these things so the color of the normal gingiva is the coral pink now it depends on the complexion of the individual it also depends on the race of the individual so indians we have more kind of a dark gingiva so these uh, the color is produced by the vascular supply the thickness as well as the degree of keratinization 
and the presence of pigmentation more the melanin pigment more is the dark color gingiva so it depends on the race also so the alveolar mucosa is red smooth shiny rather than pink and stippled and if we talk about the epithelium is actually thinner and is non keratinized and contains no red apex and also the melanin pigment which is uh, which is responsible for the color of the skin and gingiva and these gingival pigmentation occur as the purplish discoloration deep purplish discoloration which are present at irregular brown and light brown and brown patches all over the gingiva so the size of the gingiva so the sum total of the cellular and acellular or intercellular elements and the vascular components is the size it contributes to the size of the gingiva so the alteration in the size is a common feature also there the contour contour of the gingiva is like the contour of the embrasures of the embrasures of the tooth so the marginal gingiva it envelops the tooth in a collar like fashion so the it follows the scalloping of the facial and the lingual surfaces so gingiva is like is like following the pattern of the tooth so this is the contour of the gingiva and if we talk about the shape of the gingiva the interdental uh, shape of the interdental papilla we have already covered in the anterior part it is the pyramid and in the posterior part it is like coal shape coal or a tent shape we can say the consistency is firm and resilient now it depends on the uh, disease also in case of diseased gingiva the uh, gingiva is not firm and re resilient and uh, coming to the strict stru uh, surface texture if we talk about the gingiva attached gingiva is stippled and marginal gingiva is not stippled now you need to uh, remember this that the attached gingiva is the stippled gingiva and it is not always present it is actually present in 50% of the cases and marginal gingiva is the gingiva which is not stippled so stippling also indicates us and stippling actually increases this stippling you know it varies with age also so before 5 years this stippling is absent and from 5 years up to adult life stippling is present and after adult it again disappears in the old age so coming to the position of the gingiva and position of the junctional epithelium we have already covered the position of the junctional epithelium so before the tooth is erupting or uh, initial stages of erupting it is present at the enamel and once the tooth is erupting erupted tooth it is in the cementum and while the tooth is erupting it is present at the dj now uh, the erupted tooth has junctional epithelium at the cementum and in case of the crown where an atresion is present then it is shifted more apically into the root clinical root part so if we talk about the eruption time so the, the junctional epithelium location changes according to the eruption so this finishes finally the gingiva and gingiva we have already covered in this is the fourth part of the gingiva in which we have covered the gingival fibers basically in this video so if you feel that you have learned something new today and you have enjoyed the gingiva videos then go ahead and hit the like button and the comment box because this motivates me to put more videos for you every day and this helps me to help you with your career with your knowledge and with your exams while you stay at home with your family